properties. There we go. I don't want to make this too loud. Can you guys hear me okay? So just check it myself. You guys will probably get some feedback if I'm checking this. Hi, Rosemary. You bet. Okay, there we go. <laughs> as soon as I heard my voice, I'm like, okay, I don't need to hear that anymore. <laughs> So today will be much more casual garments and not a speed, speed, sped up version of a recording. We'll be doing this live this time. And I will be working on some basic garments. I know in our Discord we've had some people try to get chemise, chemise figured out. I'll do some smock dress. Oh, hi, Trassel. Uh, as a new user of Marvelous Designer, you're very happy to find the stream. Yes, welcome. We'll be doing some basic stuff, which is going to be great for new users. And in this case, um, I'm going to be showing kind of making a bunch of different pieces to make um, a bunch of different looks together. So I've got a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine garments. We'll see how far we get with it. This does include men's and women's wear pieces. Um, some might, some will probably be uh, doing some cheating. Some it will probably be doing from scratch. But if you have any questions as we go along, this is a great um, stream to just ask as I'm making things and I can answer questions while I'm building them. And we also, Trestle, if you are not part of our Discord, I'm gonna share the, all of it in a bit, but I can start now. Let me grab the, Thing here if you're not in our discord we have rosemary in the chat as well uh, she's not a moderator but she is a great member of our discord and one of our power users let me grab our discord link for you and i'll just drop it in the chat here e give stop stop when the screen, when you're just trying to close, like minimize one one of your tabs, and it's not working. I will fight you, Google Chrome. Get there we go. There's one and two. I have many tabs open right now. And I'll be doing a different chemise than a, I'll be doing an Italian chemise this time around. And I'll share the links in the chat as we're going. I'm going to build the chemise first, which is basically an undergarment from like the 17, like from a lot of the earlier centuries. So I'm going to say this one's from the 17th, 18th century. Um, is what this link says. M my mic is set to directional. I don't know why that is. Yeah, I've just got a blue Yeti. It's not, there's not much I can do about it there.
Oh, you know what? Let's see. I did mess around with my audio from our last stream to get it. We had you louder on one side. Here it is. Mix the microphone to mono. Let's see if I can fix that for you. I just messed with a lot of my settings last time to try to get multiple, to try to get uh, Eric's audio on the stream. So let's see what I did. Oh, you know what I'm just going to do? You guys are going to miss, you guys, you guys are going to, um, I'm going to go mute for a second. I'm just going to re redo the settings here. An audio. Default. All right. And settings. Audio. Yeah, I'm trying to fix that right now. I don't know what I did last time. This mono microphone side speakers, audio properties. And, and then you go here to the gear icon, your mouse, Then choose advanced audio. There it is. Properties. And your different check. So in this case, the same sound. There that we go. I is that better for is everybody? Be recorded. Oh, wait, uh... and it's going to come out on both speakers. Uh, Long while I did not realize awesome. that this feature was there, even though I've been in the. Thanks, internet. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube, for helping me fix that right during the stream. <laughs> All right, so that's good. All right, cool. I messed with a lot of my audio last time to just try to get a stream, the audio to work for the stream. So uh, we'll figure it out another time. All right, so if you guys can hear me, okay. Let's go ahead and get started. So this time I am alone. I do not have Eric with me, so I will do my introduction. So hi everyone, for those of you who don't know, I am Megan and I work for Marvelous Designer as a 3D designer and community manager. In the chat, we normally have Eric who's also helping me moderate the chat. So I will heavily ban hammer uh, based on language. So be uh, aware of that. Um, and I am also the moderator for our community channel, so if you're on our Discord, let me grab that and link it into the chat again. Um, so for those of you who are looking for resources or other users who use Marvelous Designer, you can join our Discord. That is our most active um, community right now. We do also have our website. And also in the chat, we have our uh, one of our power users today, Rosemary. She is not staff, she, but um, we love her anyway. She's been super helpful over the years, um, helping new uh, new people to Marvelous Designer. 
And so I always want to call her out because she is a sweetheart. So for our website, for those of you who don't know what software this is, and for those of you in the future who are asking me on YouTube what program I'm using, I'm using Marvelous Designer, which is our YouTube channel. And you can go to our website and look up our, YouTube, our software, which is Marvelous Designer. Um, there you can join, you can check out our forum. We have our manual up there. We have, um, that's where you can also get the free 30 day trial to download and test out Marvelous Designer and see if our software is for you. And also for those of you who are on Twitch, we have, I'm posting our YouTube channel just in case. For those of you on Twitch, we do we're, we don't have any Twitch affiliates, so we keep our streams up there for the 14 days and then they expire. So our streams are also being um, broadcast to YouTube at the same time that we're on Twitch. So if you saw a stream or you missed a stream and it's been like two weeks, three weeks, who knows how long, you can always go to our YouTube channel. And there we do keep our streams in perpetuity um, and make for each one, depending if there's multiple multiple streams for one uh one theme we do end up just putting them in a playlist of their own but we also have a full stream playlist and i know someone in the chat earlier said they were brand new to marvelous designer again i'm linking in our in the chats here the link to the beginner tutorials to marvelous designer i highly recommend you follow these these are our best practices for example there are some tutorials online that are older that didn't know you could bring in images into the background of your 2D window and then just trace it instead of just bringing them in as a texture and then trying to trace over that. So I recommend following our beginner tutorials. It's free. It's basically how we train everybody. And sometimes in our chat we have we have Eric, but this time we don't. I'm still linking this anyway. He sometimes can help answer technical questions and on the more business dev development side, but we don't have him right now. But if you do have any technical issues, like you can't get into your account, I recommend going through our website to create a support ticket. Um, fa it's faster than contacting us through like the uh, support at marvelousdesigner.com email. It gets uh, one pass of back and forth uh, done when you just submit your technical uh, issues or requests and creates a faster support ticket. So for this stream, last well, for last time, we did a very fancy wedding dress that was built over a long period of time. This time around, I'm going to be doing a bunch of garments that can be kind of mashed together to create a specific aesthetic. This time I chose cottagecore because I may or may not have been playing a specific game recently that has a theme coming out soon. That is this. Um, and I really just wanted to make a bunch of outfits that could potentially go on those custom avatars. Um, so I figured cottagecore, but also you guys can help determine what garments you want to see me make. I definitely will be making a chemise and a smock dress just because we have seen those come up in our chats relatively recently um, where people don't know or don't know where to find resources for these. So I'm going to share the resources as well as probably at the same time try to share them in the Discord or at least make a list of them for the Discord channel. Um, like speaking of which, I'm just going to go ahead and copy my some of the websites I have up here that are just free resources. Um, do. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move this because it would just become a, an abyss here. And I'm going to minimize OBS. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you something first. I will share this in the chat. I'm just copying this one. This is a type of a chemise. I'll show you the image here. I'm choosing the Italian chemise. So this one has the sleeve inside the elastic. I'm also going to be showing you how you can utilize elastic to get looks that are very quick. So it's basically going to be this pattern. So I can show you actually, I'm just going to save this image. Normally I'd measure, but we're just not going to do that work. Stream files, cottage core. So it's just this one that I'm going to take. Let's go ahead and bring in our avatar. Version two. 
So I'm going to be making a chemise for her first. Now this doesn't have to be our base avatars, but they are easier to use just for building things. And then you can use auto fitting for your custom avatar, which I can show you how to do that again on Hannah. So now that I've downloaded that image, I'm going to bring it into my background, selecting my image, stream files, cottage core stream and the cross. I could do this by eye if I wanted to, but I did want to show you that if you are tracing something or if you have a pattern that's a base that you want to use, this is a this is the most this is the best method of bringing in a an image into your workspace instead of putting it on a um, on top of a a fabric as a texture. This is such a small piece. My goodness, this is such a small shimmy. <laughs> Oh my goodness, okay. This, this image is so small. I might just have to do it by hand. We're gonna go with this one. Cause this is definitely not to scale, but that's okay. This is an example of like, sometimes patterns are great, but this is just a, a not to scale reference. So we're gonna go with this one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trace these different pieces here. I could trace it as one, but just for the sake of this, I'm gonna show you why. Because these little gussets here, I'm just going to make this a square instead. And then I'll cut the square rectangle. This is definitely not a perfect pattern, but that's okay. Because we're going to mess with it and it's a chemise. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, in this case though, it's a chemise, so it's not going to fit perfectly. But in the previous streams, I have done that. Uh, cut. I don't want to cut and sew this. Control C, Control R makes a reflected piece. And I'm just going to hold Shift. And there's those. We'll just make some rectangles. This time, I'm see, I'm going to make it long. That's what makes it nice and easy. Control, oops, I'm just gonna go control C, control V because I don't need to have that be perfect. And sleeves. So here is that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the background image by just going to reset. And I'm gonna make this see-through. Now this, the nature of a chemise is not actually perfectly fitting. So it's not a good example to your, your question, but um, yeah, you can easily just trace it and then fit it. Depending on how how you fit it, though, is is what's going to happen. Um, so if you end up fitting it, I'm trying to think how the best way to explain this. I've described this in a few other tutorials, but also in streams in the past. When you are fitting it to um, your avatar, it, let's just say it's a blouse or a top, you want to match the shoulder because the shoulder is going to de going to determine how it's going to fit. So if it is a um, not an oversized garment, you can easily just match the the low point of the shoulder to the high point of the shoulder on your pattern minus seam allowance if you have that, and then fit it from the rest of the way, and then of course fit it from the uh, probably the hip, and then adjust the waistband if you're doing pants. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and free sew, free sew this with the M hotkey. I also, this is kind of funny because I also did this way back in the day on the first stream, which was the, a very similar one, which was the, um, oh my gosh, it was the Viking one. Now when I'm using free sewing, I'm starting with the smallest pattern piece so that I can sew into this larger piece. So you'll see here, once I've started the first half of that sewing relationship, I can go to the other pattern piece here and you see this little blue dot. When I touch it, like it kind of magnets to it. This is called the ghost in Marvelous Designer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they're very similar, I'm sure. Hello, we're talking about chemise right now. So we're just doing a bunch of cottage core stuff. But for now, 
let's go ahead and place this here. So this is going to be a little big. Oh, did I do this backwards? Oh, no, I didn't. Let's do, let's try using the arrangement points here. Um, going to arrangement points. I'm just selecting this back piece, making sure it's the correct back piece. And that was my worry is that it's kind of big. Oh, also you want to make sure that the orientation of your patterns is correct because otherwise they will do exactly what that, that just did. And excuse me. Thank you. Move. There we go. In Marvelous Designer, you want to make sure that your, um, your sleeves and all your patterns are going, the grain is going up and down or they're at least up and down in your 2D window here. And boop. And now that I've done that, I can go ahead and right click, superimpose side, superimpose side, and superimpose side. So this is going to be way huge on her, but that's how it's meant to be. I believe this is correct. I might have to adjust this, but we're going to find out in a second. So the necklines are actually the sleeves and the, the sleeve portion here and the top of the neckline. So I'm going to go ahead and apply elastic just to the top, just so that we can get a look at the chemise and how it's going to fit. Uh, okay. And we'll make this a 50 and simulate. I thought I did that backwards. Okay. Let's see. What are you doing? Oh, did we not get one? No, it looks like we did. That is correct. I didn't sew the sides. Ah, what did I do? Oh, I sewed the top. I sewed the sides, not the tops. because I should have done it this way so I didn't confuse myself. Elastic. 50. There we go. This definitely needs a higher value than 50, so let's go ahead and do that. They were often, um, most of the time they're not elastic, but they were drawstring. Sometimes they just had this pattern here that I shared in the, in the um, chat has a, has a band has a finished edge, but for this, uh, this one, I'm just doing elastic just to show how you can easily get a similar look. Yeah, it did. I'm going to find out why, because I've made chemise that didn't have that. So we're going to find out in a second. Because this chemise, based on the link, it barely touches the cap of the shoulder. Um, excuse me. Why are you doing this? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Reset 3D arrangement. Why are you like this? Pardon me. You me what's going on with you. Reset 2D arrangement. I can easily adjust the pattern, but I just wanted to see why it was like that. Two inches above the gusset seam. All right, bet. 
I'm following their instructions, not the like, other chemise I've used. I mean, I'm definitely making this more complicated than it needs to be. But I just wanted to try this pattern that I saw uh, a half hour ago. Uh, sew the sleeves to the front of the body so that the edge is two inches above the gusset seam. All right, fine. B. Two inches, we're just gonna not measure that. Actually, we will measure it. I'm gonna show you guys how to, how to adjust this while you're going. I'm moving my sewing lines just so it'll be a little bit easier. Oops. I'm using the B or the edit sewing tool to move my sewing lines. And now I'm going to right click my sewing line and choose split. And I'm going to split it. Let's just do half an inch to, we're gonna do a hundred millimeters because that's close to two inches. And I'm just gonna do that to all sides. Normally these sides would be linked, but I didn't do that in this case. So I'm again, right clicking split 100. I'm doing that to both sides. Split 100. I probably need to make the gussets larger as well. I mean, just so you guys know, I haven't even attempted this pattern because I wanted you to see the troubleshooting for this specifically. So this is gonna end up going like this. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So free sewing, I'm sewing into the sleeve. So I'm going from the base in, so just so I don't have to measure it. I could measure this if I wanted to, but in this case, I am not going to do so. And now we're going to finish this up. I'm just moving using the edit sewing tool again to move my sewing relationship. And that brings it up. I might have made the elastic too tight too. But that's okay, because we're just troubleshooting this. So what you can do without much of a pattern. And I then need to sew the gussets together. And I am rotating them back, holding shift. Let's see. Yep, I am in the Los Angeles office. Uh, Marvelous Designer is tough for complex complex clothes. Actually, I find my Marvelous Designer to be the best for complex clothes as well. I've made suits and I've made wedding dresses on here. Yeah, I should probably just make this elastic a little less severe. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and adjust that. Make it 40. There we go. Hey, look at that, there's my chemise. Now the reason I had some problems was that I just needed to move this around. You wanna have everything going up and down. So I'm just gonna lengthen my chemise now. And this is at 20 particle distance, so let's go ahead and reduce this to, uh, we'll do 10. And simulate. I do kind of want to make the gusset a little bit bigger, but we'll just leave it as it is for now. Now give her a hat. She is not going to have a hat, at least right now. 
So we have the basic chemise down. Let's go ahead and give this a little bit of smocking, but not the final smocking we were talking about. Um, this one is normally a bound edge, but I'm not doing that this time, just for the sake of ease here. I'll show you guys a trick. So I'm selecting all of my edges that are my segment lines that are around the neckline here, and I'm going to right click, offset as an internal line. We'll do not 10 millimeters, that's not even a half inch. We'll do half inch and we'll do numerous. So I did three, so you can see here, I have all of these lines and then I'm going to apply elastic and the same value. So we're gonna do 40. to get us started on this mocking look. It's not gonna be perfect because I actually should have done this probably by drawing. So I'm gonna adjust this really fast actually. So because this is 100 millimeters in, I'm going to measure with my eye 100 millimeters just so they sort of match up. There we are, so that's a little bit better. It's not pretty, but what I should do is draw on them. Uh, okay, cool, that's easy. So what I did was I just used the draw on Give me the name so I can pop it up so you guys can see it. The line 3D pattern tool. So I'm just drawing on the actual line in 3D just so I can check it. And using the edit tool, convert to internal shape. So what I've done, so that's telling me that I can easily just get away with doing a straight line from this one, giving this one a little bit of space and the same with this one. And I'm using backspace to take a step back in my action. So I'm just gonna select these. Control C, Control R. And then give these elastic uh, 40. And now it should connect. Oh, I turned off these earlier while I was playing around. Let me turn on the internal lines for everybody to see. So it's a little bit better. It's not perfect. I'm not trying to have it be perfect during this stream, but this is just so you can see that they can connect. So you have, two you have a, cu a couple different options. You can also just make this entire thing one whole pattern piece, which I did not do, and I could have done this. But I wanted to show you that you have some options with the look just of this basic chemise. Le let's see, I, I know it's not perfect, but I do still prefer the one on the right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the sleeve I just made. It's okay. Control C, Control D makes a linked and mirrored sleeve. So it's over here. because I'm going to use this to make another garment. Up. And then we're just gonna sew it again. And then the back one, where'd it go? It's not actually like a decent, it's not a very good sewing job, but you know what, it's fine. I wouldn't do this in actual sewing. This is a good example. Excuse me, elastic line. Okay. 
would be great if you could figure yourself out though. Avatar, why are you doing this today? Pose. So I'm seeing why her under armor is having that collision issue. So I'm just going to fix that real fast. Oh, it's just because it wasn't sewn. That's why. And I sewed it backwards. It'd be great if you could stop simulating. That's fine. This one needs to sew to the proper side. The difference between Clo and Marvelous Designer is the features that are dedicated to each industry. Okay, where am I? Uh, do, do, do. Okay, I want this one. There we go, and now I can have her arms go back down to the A pose. Again, I should have probably made the gussets larger, but... I just wanted to make a bunch of pieces this time around, and then kind of answer questions if you guys had any, and show examples as we went. I do want to add... I guess this is pretty much it actually, based on the image. I would rather have done it in a different way, which would have been exactly having this connected all as one piece. But this works for now. So this is a basic chemise. Um, another way to do it would be to have these all um, individual pieces or even to just I don't know if you want to show, want me to show you another way to do it or to move on to another garment. Because this is how it's laying now. Notice how I'm not simulating while I'm doing this because it will affect how it's simulating. So the reason that it's looking like this on the underarms is because this is going a little bit too far. Eh. I want to see if I end up liking this more. All right, cool. And they were, these two sleeves are symmetrically linked. So uh, what I do to one happens to the other. Should help with the underarm strain, so let's just see. Normally these would be connected, but I want to get go ahead and move forward. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just, do I want to do it from scratch or do I want to show you how to do it from a t-shirt? We're going to do it from a t-shirt. So I basically made my chemise, so I'm going to go ahead and just save this. File, save as project. I'm saving this into the cottagecore collection and I'm going to do chemise. Spelled in the English method. Uh, 
Yeah, this one's the 17th century. The 18th century tends to have a more curved call a curved neckline. I'll just show that. Uh, I don't want the 1660s one. Here. This is a 16th or 18th century one. This one actually has a bit of a shoulder to it. And it has the cuff here. This one's the an Italian one just from a free website that I just shared. But this one's from a an apparel company that you could purchase if you really wanted to. Even some even some chemise don't have the uh, gathering either. They really were just undergarments. So let's go ahead and I finished this. So I'm going to go ahead and file new project, keeping our avatar. I'm trying to decide what style I want for. We're going to do a smock dress next. So I want to look at smocked dresses really fast and we'll see. Let's just do it from a basic t-shirt so I can show some new people how to get started. Yeah, the patterns are very easy. They're generally just basically what I just made. Trestle, if you look at the very, our very first stream, I was referencing actual historical um, patterns for at least the, the undergarments, not the armor. But um, yeah, they're just basically that large chemise just without the gathering and just with a hole, a hole for the neckline because it was out of wool. Uh, where, where, where we go? Going to uh, do we have the garments? No. Okay. So for those of you who are new to Marvelous Designer, we have the modular configurator. Um, not a lot of you know what this is. This is here. We have men's and women's. So sh women's. You could make a jacket very easily, or you know what I'm gonna do is steal a T-shirt, and we're gonna do a dropped shoulder or dropped sleeve. I'm just going to choose a round neckline and a cap sleeve. She's not in the correct pose. She should be in an A pose or an a, a, a pose, but she's not. So I'm just going to adjust that really fast and turn off arrangement points and simulate. So here's a very basic shirt. We're done. Now, um, let me find. It's so funny. All right. Some of these are really funny patterns, but okay. So I'm going to make a basic chemise, but I'm going to start cutting this out. If you wanted to use a, a shirt that exists. Do I want to cut it out or do I want to just make a rectangle? I will show you what I'm looking at. A bunch of the, a bunch of these uh, dresses are like this whether it's just the smocking here and then a sleeve attached. That's a very tall cap sleeve. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and steal the sleeve instead and make it a little faster. Remove modular relationship. I don't want those frames anymore. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it that way. I'm going to freeze the sleeves. I'm going to show you how to manipulate them in a minute. But we're literally just going to make smocking, which having worked at a fabric store in my past life, it's a rectangle <laughs> and it's gonna, it, it, the funniest part is it looks really cool once you've done it, but uh, control C, control D, symmetrically linked. So we have a front and a back. Throwing this piece on the back, throwing this piece on the front. Sewing them together. And since they are symmetrically linked, I can do this. It makes it easy. Right click. For those of you who have Clo, this term is a different term. So just be aware of that. Offset as internal line along curved. I can also use it as offset between two segment lines, basically. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a bunch of segment lines. I'm going to add eight just because I feel like adding eight. And I'm going to go ahead and... While they're selected, I'm going to select elastic 
And I'm going to go actually ahead and deactivate these and simulate. So it's not enough. Select them all again. This time I'm including the top and the bottom. Elastic on. I'm going to do 50% ratio. All right, we're getting there. Make this uh, 10 particle distance. So I get a little bit better wrinkles. I need to bring this up though. You can come over the bust, please. And thank you. Right click, reset 3D arrangement. There we go. Better. Still not perfect, but we're going to go ahead and fix that by changing the fold angle. Even though it's at 10 particle distance, I can go lower. I'm going to do... Uh, let's see, which one looks better? Full strength at 100, or is it at 0? I think it's at 100. The fold strength is this way. Our fold angle is three. There we go, 360. To get that nice bubbling, it does help to have the fold angle be at 360. That's what it was. So I can get more bubbling there. This is okay. This is showing me that I actually should be increasing this pattern. The thing with smocking is though that you're gonna have to change its sizing a little bit as you go because it's going to get tighter on the bust and looser on the bottom probably not simulating jiggle physics and marvelous designer will having to deal with no it 100 percent would not i guarantee you <laughs> your, pro your computer would probably crash um Cyber Ghost, to toggle that off, here's the display window that it has changed depending on the um, version. Yeah, if you try to do jiggle physics with fabric simulation, imagine how much strain that would put on a CPU and a GPU at the same time. Just imagine. So it's right here. I went to my little fabric icon here and transparent surface. So I can toggle that on and off. Like, you would have to have a supercomputer and then pray that it would function. So what happened here is I grabbed the elastic line and normally you don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave that where it is. I like how this kind of looks. So what's going to happen is I need to tighten around the waist. So what ends up happening is I need to stair step my ratio. So I'm going to make this 50 and make this 40 on the bottom. So it's just a little tighter on our bust. But since we're here, let's go ahead and adjust our sleeve. I do want this to ride to hit higher on her. So the sleeves will help. So with this sleeve, I do need the cap to be much larger. Again, I'm going to show you the cap, the reference here. Aesthetic cottage core clothing. Um, yeah, it's not going to help. It's just a really tall sleeve cap, which normally wouldn't fit very well, but let's just go ahead and pretend that it will. I'm going to cur convert that to a curve point. And much like the mutton sleeve, I'm just going to go ahead and increase the sleeve cap height. So this is a sleeve cap. This is the cap top here. I'm going to use the edit curvature tool or the C hot key and I'm just going to grab and drag that up. It's adjusting the whole curve but if I wanted to be more specific I can use the smooth the uh, edit curve point tool to adjust the curves more specifically as you can see here. So me doing that and then I'm going to go ahead and so this is where the underarm is and I'm adding these segment points so that I can only apply elastic to the top. And what I'm doing to one side will apply it to the other. 
And so let's go ahead and activate this. And also, so doing this by eye here. So where are we? Boop, 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 boop. And this is the back. Where is the back? Okay. And because this is gathered, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And in this case, I'm just eyeballing it. But unfortunately, they're not symmetrically linked across the center, so I'm going to have to do it on the other side as well. And we're going to make sure we have elastic. I am going to freeze these just to make it a little bit faster with control K. That's fine. Yeah, I figured I would do that. Okay. To make my life a little bit easier, I am going to increase the friction on my avatar. Static friction, I'm just going to make that one. Because I'm styling her, it's not a real clothes. It's not a real clothes. Hello, welcome. We are designing just quick one-offs and a whole bunch of just looks today. So we have our under we have our underarm, we have the friction, which is helping keep it in place. I can probably increase the cap on this or let's just do a little bit more adjustments here. And now let's check my curve points. Let's just delete those. Boop. Because this is elastic. Oops. Don't do that. Convert to curve point. And then just change the elastic value again. Because we're just playing around with this. Yeah, I know elastic, you're mad. It's fine, calm down. It'll figure itself out in a second. That's too much elastic. Ah, kinetic friction. This is also where how you can keep it in place. It was just my friction was too high or was too low for this. Today is just kind of quick and dirty. Let's just kind of break the rules that we all should already kind of know. Because sleeves don't normally like to stay on people like this anyway. Come on. Thank you. Come here. I just need to grab the seam and pull it back up because I turned on friction. Yeah, fine. So this is it without the friction uh, adjusted because it's elastic. So it's trying to go to the lowest point. But if I adjust it, control K, this is how you can keep things in place and style it without having to worry too much about it actually properly fitting. Because I normally teach like how to properly fit a garment, but there's ways around that. Especially with elastic value. See how it's not moving as much anymore? It's because I've increased the kinetic and the static friction on the avatar itself makes it a little hard while you're styling, but it is a workaround. 
doesn't help while you're doing it elastic. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit puffier of a sleeve. Which is why I did that. Yeah, don't worry about the spikes. Like what Rosemary said, you're seeing me get these spikes all the time. It's just something that happens with the elastic tool as you're, as you're manipulating it. It's not as scary as it, it's not as scary as it looks. I could also pin this to the avatar if I wanted, but there's just different ways to get the same look that you're, to get the same look. Okay. I would like this to go higher. Yeah, see, here's a little spike of the elastic. That's just the elastic um, kind of going back into its spot. You. Come here. There you go. This is how you can cheat it, basically. So let's go ahead and add elastic little little poof sleeves. I want my little poof sleeves. Eighty. Let's do sixty for my little poofs. And we'll bring this down to five. Just so I get more, more of those nice wrinkles. All right. So I could adjust this some more, but we're just kind of doing a bunch of looks all at once. So let's go ahead and move forward. I need to add the skirt. You could stop here. I'll show you how to We'll make this a little like little flounce top and then we'll make this a, a dress and that'll be pretty fast. So we'll make this a flounce first. Control C, Control R. No wait, Control C, Control D. Control R is a reflected copy. Control D is a connected and mirror copy. And we'll sew those together. And once I've created a sewing relationship, a good trick, so I don't have to like have it kind of slingshot into everything, is to do superimpose. So there's three options. I'm going to do superimpose side. And then superimpose side again. Or I'll honestly select them both and do superimpose side. And it's less ugly. Alright. Uh, that was worth a try. Where are you going? I must have sewed something wrong while just eyeballing this. Let's see, where, what are we doing? superimpose side. That'll be a little easier. I must have just flipped them. Fine. You know what? Sometimes superimpose do doesn't work. You can if you wanted to, but the problem is that it'll still collide in with her torso. So I've already frozen it. So there's a bunch of different ways to go. I'm going to double check my sewing in 3D. Which side? Okay, that's correct. This is also 20 particle distance, so let's go ahead and make that. We'll just make it 10. I'm trying not to do too many stair step. Okay. 
too many higher resolution ones because it does eat up a lot. So if you actually went to the store and bought a smock dress, or in this case is the smocked top, it's literally just elastic applied to a rectangle and then the rest of it isn't and it's just a rectangle. So here's my smock top. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Save as, save project as smock top because I'm gonna make a little look with that later. You could just save just the top as well. But I wanna make this a dress just for the sake of this. So turning off simulation. Excuse me, turn on, thank you. Turning off simulation, holding shift to pull it straight down and simulating that. And control H just to get it not colliding with itself. Oh, that's awesome that you uh, it got you into designing. Control H. And here is a very basic uh, smock dress. This one, uh, let's see. Let's add a, s well, first of all, let's make this a little longer. So short. It's like right in the middle of like cute short and not cute short. Excuse me, can you maybe not collide with yourself? That would be super duper. Again, I'm using control H to stiffen this or strengthen. And this is all at 10 particle distance, so that's why it's kind of slow. Excuse me maybe go a little faster for me. Thank you. This is also a good example of like maybe always working in 20 particle distance, getting your silhouette down and then starting to stair step down your particle distance to the, you know, lower or preferred one that you're looking for. So you have more accuracy. There we go. And control H. <laughs> I talk to it all the time. I mean, we've been in a panorama, a, a panini, as you, as one would say. And so you, you got to talk to yourself. Also, I go too fast, if you guys notice. So let me know if, if I'm ever going too fast for you. Okay, so we're going to do... A cute little dress based on the one I'm looking at on the side. So it's going to have a slit on the leg. So I'm just going to use my little ghost. Now it's going to become asymmetrical. So I am going to go ahead and remove linked editing. So what I do to one side no longer will happen to the other side. Select her where I want my slit to be. Cut and sew. Use the edit sewing tool. Oops. Select that sewing relationship. And we'll give her a little leg slit. Though she can be cute while picking wildflowers. And I'm also going to shorten this hem. I know I lengthened it, but now we're shortening it. Cause I'm gonna add ruffles. Measure my ruffle 
times two, 27, 21.4. Okay. Very wide, so we'll shorten that. And so it's in. Holding shift. Oops. Starting from the slit. So you go doop. And around town. Superimpose right 3D window side. Still want this to be shorter. I don't like that. Yes, thank you, Rosemary. For gathering ruffles, you want to do two to three times uh, the width that you're sewing into. And we do talk about that, I believe, in one of our basic beginner tutorials for those who are new to Marvelous Designer. On YouTube. There we go. So what I did was I used the free sewing tool and I sewed it in, not from the side seam where I was sewing it previously, but I did sew it from the slit where I started. So that's kind of important to just remember. So you do want it to be about two to three times as long. So at least one and a half at the least, but I can also make it wider. And to prevent the wrinkling from going to the, um, to anything but the ruffle, you can use the seam taping and apply that to the seam that the ruffle is sewing into by just selecting the seam taping tool and then clicking it on that hem. We'll give it a second. It looks scary. It's not as scary as, as, it, as it might seem. And if you have collision issues, a good tip I did on the previous stream is turning off simulation. If that isn't coming out, let me just select my spot. So if this is having a problem coming outside, you can see here my ruffles. I can basically just select the area that those ruffles are colliding and pull it out and then simulate. Let's see why you're doing this. This should all be at, tw oh, it's at 10 still. We'll do 20 again. Yeah, it's really eating itself, I agree. It's because it was at uh, the 10 particle distance, and then it's just like, hey, how about you stop that? Hmm? Uh, do you activate pattern in sewing? It'd be super duper if you uh, didn't do that. Where are we? Why are we? Why are we inside of a leg? See, isn't that easier? That's what I thought. Activate. Superimpose over. Sometimes over, sometimes side works. You better figure yourself out. Thank you. Yeah, that's why you want to do 20 particle distance. I also have a lot of elastic values up here that are still in the simulation. So that's what's kind of causing this to, ca to be a little bit more severe than it normally would be. I should have probably deactivated these pieces, but I was e easily able to fix it, as you can see here. 
So this is why this is a good example of I brought my simulation down to 10 and then I added my uh, ruffles when I should not have done that. To make it easier on the simulation in my computer mainly, I should have kept it at 20 particle distance, added all my design elements, and then started bringing it down for higher detail. But I didn't do that. Because I, you know, I'm showing multiple different options. So I did a basic simple dress with ruffles, and then I did without the ruffles. Basic simple dress, and now I'm adding the slit. And me doing that is going to cause it issues because I brought it down to 10, and I should have brought it up to 20, and then continued forward. But I did not do that. Hmm. And also just for fun, elastic, elastic can go the other way as well. So let's just show you an example of that. I don't know. So it's considered a lettuce edge. So we're going to 120. So it'll make the edges actually point outward. And put a, a little stabilization on that hem. And simulate. So I can also do this if I really wanted to. It's not perfect. I mean, it's obviously at 20 particle distance. So let's see how it looks. This is a lettuce edge. So in sewing, doing this lettuce edge is, an is a term where you're stretching out the fabric. Yeah. That's why I like doing the live ones instead of the pre-recorded streams, but I know the pre-recorded streams I can get more things done. Or at least, you know, you can see it done. Um, the only course for Marvelous Designer that I recommend are the ones that we have made on YouTube. All the other ones that we've seen tend to have, um, like, they're okay, but they're different um, processes. Like, I definitely don't recommend bringing in fabric, bringing in a texture, and then tracing the texture when you've always been able to right-click and add an image to your background and then trace an image that way. So, it's up to you. Um, I recommend any course that's free, honestly. And we have a bunch of them that we recommend on our own channel. That basically tell you how to do it. But it's from, um, they, some of them tend to be old, though. Oh, awesome, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping to get some buttons in here, too. I wanted to cover that. Yeah, so I did a little lettuce edge. They're not always pretty. They tend to actually be quite ugly. Look at my little lettuce edge. It's all lettuce. Because it looks like lettuce. That's why it's called a lettuce edge. Um, just for fun, let's go ahead and just finish this dress. I'm going to select a fabric. Let's do... Let's just... Hmm... I don't want plush cotton. We'll do chambray. I currently don't have any calicos at the moment, um, but I do have a gingham. I don't know if I want to do gingham for this. Control A, and I'm just going to drag and drop the cotton chambray. And is everything except for the waistband 10? Okay, cool. Or for the sleeve 10. Sleeve is also 10. Let's add some little ruffles to the sleeve. Because we're finishing this one up. Uh, 424.8. So that'll be 850. And we'll make that 100. Super tiny. Control C, Control D to make a symmetrically linked piece. Copy and place using the N so N hotkey to do the segment sewing tool and N again. Let's see if superimposed side works today. That did not work today. Made a bit of a mess, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the arrangement points. It. 
in place. It's already frozen, so I don't need to worry about that. And we'll just kind of get it in place. It is still pretty high. Why? Why did you not... You are symmetrically linked. Excuse me. Oh, I know what happened. If you do use the arrangement points, you gotta remember to, to remove the uh, sewing relationship because it'll it'll overlap itself, and sometimes you'll end up getting a bit of a problem where it is creating a Mobius strip. It would be great if you would not collide with everything today. Awesome. And then we're just gonna wait for it to settle. Settle down. Very impatiently. Another way to do it is to, I'm freezing this entire, or I'm not freezing the entire cap. I am just using the pins. Some of you might not have the partial freeze, so that's why I'm doing this. And I am going to help it a little bit by reducing static friction back to the original values, which is 0 0.05. helps but doesn't always all right where are we at what are you doing what are... yeah we got a hole aha uh -huh, there it is so as you saw it was colliding with itself Still trying to do it, but it'll it'll settle in a second. There it is. And this one's still tucked up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and see where it's tucked. So we got this whole bit right here. Up inside. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that mesh that's just kind of stuck up her sleeve. There it is. Now I do know that there's a flip in it. So let's go ahead and pull out it for a second. It's almost done sorting itself out. All right, cool. I can actually just leave the pin there for now. I do like having the lack of friction 
but because these pins are still there, I'm just going to use that to hold it up. So you can use the friction or you can use pins. You have a bunch of different options for styling it. Give the elastic a minute. to settle itself down. And I will un unstiffen this just because it shouldn't be stiff. There. I could add ruffles here if I wanted. I don't really want to right now. Let that do its thing. And we have a very simple little smock dress. And we've made a smock top, don't forget. I'm just pulling it around and playing with it. Um, we'll let that settle, because it's down to 10 particle distance. So my next option on my list here is another type of dress to go over the chemise or to do overalls that the smock top will go underneath. Um, do you guys have any preference there? Because we do have about a half hour left. All right, we got one vote for overalls. I probably should not have flung that hem. Okay, so we've got two votes for overalls. I'll give it a little bit more time to see if we got any other other votes, but I like I like the overalls idea as well. Surprised two hours just flies by, I swear. Cause I've also got menswear, like a cozy sweater, but we might do that if if we like the the quick garments. If we like me doing more of these quick garments, we can keep doing just quick different pieces. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause, save project, and we're going to call this the smock dress. Oh. Well, I can cut it later. I accidentally rewrote smock top file, save as project instead of save project as smock, smock dress. All right, overalls it is. Before we go anywhere, I'm gonna make this back into the smock top. Um, delete. Merge these together. Using the sewing tool, I can merge sewing relationships or the edit sewing tool. So right click merge with the, the B hotkey, merging that back together. I'm going to delete this point and this point because I don't need it anymore. And now it's going to be the smock top again. File, save as project <laughs> smock top. All right, and let's go ahead and do overalls. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do a file new. No. I actually have an overall pattern that I will share with you guys that I found. I don't want that one. Where'd it go? I don't want that one. Well, I'll show you. And I'll probably throw it in the uh, Discord. Again, add background image. I saved this overall pattern from a Russian website to here. 
So I'm going to make the opacity uh, 23% just so I can see because I'm for pants and things with pants, I'm matching the crotch because um, this needs to be a little bit bigger. So you're matching the front here. I'm giving her some space. If you wanted more wrinkles, you would make it not fit properly, but I'm doing this as a little oversized. We're going to do 100 and 120. Let's see. Because this is center front. This line is center front. This has no seam allowance. Give some uh, ease there. Let's do 120. And I'm going to trace this. And this is showing you like from a, a pant and from a block that has the bodice and the pant connected. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. So now I'm just tracing, holding the control key backspace to do that. I want this to actually be a piece of its own. So it's one. So you could do this from scratch by literally just making, taking the pants that we have that are available in the basic default, but you can also find basic patterns online and then adjust them. Again, this is just showing a pattern manipulation, which I can show in a bit. This has two different rises because this is apparently for men's wear based on that. For those of you who don't know uh, which side you wear your trousers on, that is what it is for. These are these are dolls without anything, so we don't need to worry about that. And this is just going to be an oversized baggy trouser, so or I should say pant. And I'm not going to account for that right now. I don't think I want to include the pocket wrap around. Make this pretty simple. Uh, control C, Control D to make asymmetrically linked two back pieces. Stitch those together. And do the same with the front. Stitching the rises together. And this one I'm linking symmetrically uh, unfold with symmetric ed editing. So I'm unfolding it across the half so that I can do a little pocket. My little patch pocket. Figure out where I want to put that. I can fake a waistband, but I'm like, do I even want a waistband? We could do some cute little patch pockets if we wanted. Let's see how this fits and then we'll design. Then we'll work on the design. And then I'm just going to make a rectangle for the top. Control C, Control D again, making sure it is symmetrically linked. Using the free sewing tool, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Though I will add that, that taper To it and then we'll go ahead and place this on my avatar using the arrangement points again doing the legs we'll make this front I might want to make that longer too so sometimes see that's that's the one thing I'm like eh like, that's nice that that's going through her so nice. I don't want that. That's the one problem with like really large pieces that have pant legs. Okay, where are we at? Superimposed side. There we go. Superimposed side. And then... I 
I can you can also free sew in the 3D window as well for those of you who did not who might not have known that. Starting from edge to edge, double click to finish. Bib will definitely need to be taller, but it'll be easier to manipulate once I've actually gotten it on. I'm pretty sure this is just a generic work work piece. So uh, let's give this a try. Let's see if I have any. Oh, I shouldn't. This should fit. Yeah, this fits. I figured it would do that. Come on. We're going to pull this up higher. And I'm going to make this, oops, I don't want to use the zipper. I'm going to make this five particle distance, or at least ten. Just going to cheat, <laughs> freeze it, unfreeze it. There you go. Well, I figured this would also be cute with um, that peplum. Like, you don't have to see the peplum piece underneath. All right, so we basically have this and then make sure I'm just sewing in the 3D window. And that's going to cause an issue. Yeah. Let's just put that back. And first, I'm going to get rid of this guy. Show mod icons. There we go. We'll delete that message. Uh, gotta love spam bots. It is. I'd like to delete my own message, but thank you, Restream Bot. Can I? I guess I can't delete technically my own. But sorry about that. All right. I normally have the settings from um, Twitch pretty heavily moderated, so I'm surprised they got through. But they just got a ban, so whatever. Probably a bot. There we go. All right, cool. Simulate. Yeah, let's go ahead and make this a bit wider. When I widen this, I'm also going to need to widen my sewing. Yeah, I think I also want to make this a bit of a square. So I've basically got the fit. I mean, I could I could make this a bit more fitted, but this is also kind of cute for like a baggy pant. So we'll just play with the, the style of this for a little bit. I'm going to remove my image from the background because I don't need it anymore. Reset. So we basically have this. I can, let's go ahead and just show file, add, project the smock top, because the smock top is gonna go, make sure it's on add, only garment. It doesn't matter. Um, Move this. So we're gonna, excuse me. Gonna go ahead and freeze everything but the peplum for this. Freeze make this layer, make everything else layer one. So the things that are going over are going to become layer one. And this peplum is not frozen because it needs to go underneath. 
And to make this a little easier on the simulation, I'm going to just pull this out. And the same with these two upper bits. Throw that pebble underneath there. This is also a good way to use existing pieces. I mean, it's probably not going to be the most flattering thing. Because she's got a whole peplum underneath, underneath it. But, uh... Mm, we can, I can definitely see it stretchy. Let's add fabric to this. Uh, let's do... I'm going to bring in... Probably just denim, just the denim texture for now. A little country style, yeah, a little, little kind of cottage core, kind of not, you know, it's just hashtag aesthetic, right? Bunch of different looks today. Select all of it, drag and drop, but what I am going to do is change this to, I want to do plaid. So we're going <laughs> to, I have a plaid that I got from uh, Substance, so let me just go ahead and pick that. Select fabric. Oh wait, no. Was it this one? Oh, I actually did put it in substance and soft plaid. Oh yes, perfect. Christmas time. Uh, we're not doing that. Let's go ahead and change that. Uh, custom. So this one's not an official substance one. This one was a substance source found one. So let's go ahead and just do like black and white for now. Ooh. Okay, I kind of like that one, though. I mean, I'm not simulating right now, just, just so you know, which is why I'm turning this on. Kind of cute, kind of not. Let's see what else we can do. We've got blue. We could do pink. We could do a little pink plaid. Or maybe just blue. All right. Okay. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't hate that. Maybe I'll change the color of the shirt. Maybe I can make the shirt a different something or other. We'll change the color of the shirt. We'll make this. What, what if we did like a, a taupe? A taupey brown? Maybe, maybe just a pink, like a light pink or something. And then we'll just make this. Probably not blue. We'll stick with. A little bright. Why do I not like this anymore? <sighs> we'll just do normal denim. I wanted to do plaid. I was so excited about it. We'll just do that for now. Remove linked editing, and then I'm going to select my internal line here. I do want to make this a pocket, I think, but I do agree this needs to be a little taller. Go back to freezing this. 
And I do want to just add elastic in the way in the back just to make it a little more flattering on her, I think. This is clearly menswear. Just add across the back here. Convert that to its internal line or shape. Making sure this stays square. I'm actually going to do this. Come here. A little bit lower. And add elastic. I didn't realize this this whole this time around is just elastic everything today. Just so it's a little cuter, a little more flattering. Make this a little curve. And now we'll make this into a... So, I'm going to make sure this is clear. Um, this was two different pieces across the symmetrically linked line, so I'm going to go ahead and select them, those segment points and merge to average. Right click merge to average. So now it's an internal solid object or polygon. Double clicking it, right click, clone as pattern. Makes it much faster. Using the M hotkey or the free sewing tool, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew right on it. Oops. Using B, okay, there we go. Right click, super impose over. I accidentally clicked under. Superimpose over. And now we have a pocket. Oh, this also needs to be layer one. Now we have a little pocket. Where's my pocket? Pocket. Yay! Yeah, we, we have a lot of... Uh, I was hoping to cover a lot of quick things in this tutorial, so I'm glad you are enjoying it. Let's add a side pocket here. And then probably call it soon. I do have a bunch more that I have for like menswear, but we can do that later, I guess. So for the pocket, I'm going to outline the whole pocket. Hitting enter. I'm going to use the, so you guys can see it, I always try to have it pop up the smooth curve tool and curve out that pocket. And then I'm going to draw the actual pocket. So this is the pocket bag. And then, yes, thank you. I'm trying to draw inside. And then I'll draw the, uh, outer portion of the pocket using the edit curve tool. So this is going to be the pocket bag and this is going to be the part where your hand goes in. Holding shift with the edit tool. I'm selecting all my outlines. Right click or I should use the trace tool. Traces pattern. I've got my pocket bag. When you're tracing something and you want it to become a separate pattern piece and you've already drawn your internal lines, make sure you also select the um, <clears throat> the segment lines on the outside too. Because it'll select whatever like polygon that be is made. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. It's going to do it to both. So now that I've got my basic shape, now I can start adding complexities to it. This is still at 20 particle distance, but what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I'm going to reduce all the layers to zero. So this will be a little easier. I'm going to sew this pocket bag. So this is going to be the underneath portion. I'm faking this. We're not making this a real pattern piece. This would have a few more pieces to it. 
like the closing the bag, but we're cheating. Um, if we wanted to actually hide it, this is kind of like a reverse patch pocket if I was to do this like actually. So because I deleted this piece so that she can put her hand in, I'm going to go ahead and create that sewing relationship with the pocket. Make a symmetrically linked piece, control C, control D for the other side, which any sewing relationship you make across something that is symmetrically linked will make it. So this upper piece is not symmetrically linked anymore. So I'm going to just have to do that sewing relationship one more time. There is one thing that does make this a little more complex is this needs to sew to the rest of this. So I can place this underneath and symmetrically and do superimpose under, but I still need to sew this to the rest of the pants. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the rest of this to this. I figured. I wanted to try it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to have to do three different sets. So here's the first one. The second one is the line for the bag. Oh, is it already? I already have the sewing relationship. That's why. And then sew the side. And again, do the same thing to the side seam for the pant. And because they're symmetrically linked, it should have done it to the other one. Double check. Right click, superimpose under. And right click, superimpose under. Again, I'm going to select all of this and make it layer one, one more time. And simulate just so it pops up over that peplum. Unfreezing the peplum just so it can push it down. And now we have our pocket. Obviously th this what pattern had the uh, like buttons of actually like stepping in and out of it, but this one is just a little cheater one. Super easy, fun and fast. We'll make this a little bit longer on the pant leg. I didn't actually check where it hits on her knee. Let's see if this fit is going to be a problem. Oh yeah, let's let's adjust that a little bit here. Actually, we'll just make this straight. I don't want this to taper anyway. I want this to be a baggy pant. Do a rolled hem in, in 10 minutes. Oh, what did I do to this leg? Oh my god. I could. I was thinking about it. I do need to fix this leg, though. I don't like how it's coming out. This does have a fit issue, which is what that's doing. I mean, I could do a rolled hem. I actually haven't done one in a long time, have I? Uh, no clue to your question, Zofo. I have no answer for that. <laughs> I can do a folded one. I can try to do a rolled hem. Let's see how far we can go. So let's just do a f the first one. Okay, ignoring my fit issue, I do want you all to know there is a fit issue with this pant. See how it's coming out of her leg? 
I want to fix the fit issue so bad. I'm just gonna, just, just, just let me do it for a second. Just, just give me, just, just, fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's fine. It's fine. We don't see the fit issue. We're ignoring the fit problem, okay? This needs to be this way. So all of the internal lines need to, all the internal pieces need to be shifted in. Just so you all know. But we'll do the, we'll do a little cuff. I'll show you two ways to do the cuff. So we'll do it manually with the fold arrangement tool. A little, little, little turned cuff. So when you use the fold arrangement tool, you can also see the fold angle. You want to make it the full edge. So you can also select your fold angle, 360, by selecting your line. Yay, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're going to have fun with it. It is a little complex, so feel free to like join us on the streams. You can always submit questions. And don't forget to join our Discord channel where you can chat with other people and get help. I moderate our Discord channel. I'm not always like on it because I am prepping for, I'm doing other things besides social media, but I do moderate. Come on. Why are you doing this? Make a little cuff, come on. Where are you? 360. And 360. What helps is if you just stiffen it and it will go into place half the time. You can also cut and sew to create your uh, cuff. I'll show it with this one because it's being a brat. Cut and sew. Okay. Come on. I probably should just made this cuff a little bit bigger. But here's where we do the fold angle at 150 or 360 degrees. You can do it in sewing as well. Excuse me, Cuff. Why are you why are you like this today? Hmm? Why are we, what are we doing today, hmm? Come on. Fine, I see how it is. <laughs> wow, just, just the tiny cuff. I know it's probably cause it's like 20 particle distance, but still the other side did it. You can do it too. I believe in you. Don't believe in yourself. Believe in me who believes in you. There we go. I want to make this 10. So ignoring the fact that there is a fit issue, the legs should be going straight down. 
We're ignoring that. I want everyone... Don't admit that. Don't acknowledge it. This model that we have here is our base, uh, our base model that comes with Marvelous Designer. Right click. Oh, you know what? In the next stream, we'll, we'll continue this for the next stream. We tend to do two streams. Um, let me show you what happens if, like, let's just say that this avatar here. Let me show you how to use the fit, the um, auto fit feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these pins before we do that. It's so like I could do that or I kinda wanna show you what a lot of people still have issues with and I did wanna show that. So I've basically, I've made this little cuff here. We'll finish it later. I did wanna show again with Hannah Okay, so we have this whole look here, okay? I'm gonna simulate it once. It's gonna fall off her shoulders, that's fine. This might have a little bit of an issue with fitting Hannah, but I did wanna show you how to make the, uh, a modular, not a modular, how to make the fit suit again, because I know this has been a, a, a new thing for a lot of new users. I'm going to save this as a file, save project as this. Okay. File new. I'm going to show you guys how to do the fit suit and then we'll go ahead and probably end the stream after that. I'm going to Hannah. I'm going to make another fit suit for her. I'm going to. I have so many fit suits for Hannah. She already has a fit suit because she has a default avatar with Marvelous Designer. But for those of you who are bringing in your own custom avatar, you've designed on our base avatars and you want to bring it in for your stylized avatar. Let's go ahead and make a fit suit for that. This only works for Marvelous Designer versions 10 and above. Those that have the fit suit feature. So there is in the 3D window an option called creating fit suit. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it shows the create fitting suit. I have my symmetry turned on, so I only have to follow where these highlight. So upper neck. And you do want to make it as parallel to the floor as you can. Lower neck. See, this isn't going to be perfect, but that's okay. I just want you to see. Waist. So I'm choosing the smallest part of her. And in this case, she has a sway back, a severe sway back, just because of her style. So I'm, because I want my garment to fit similarly to how it's been draped on the previous avatar, I'm making it lay parallel to the ground. This is a severe stylized sway back. So just be aware of how you make your fit suit. It will change how things are redraped or refit to your uh, avatar. Wrist, it's showing me the left screen wrist, not left worn. So just be aware of that. Oh, you got auto banned by the bot for sharing a link. I'll unban you in a bit. Um, I have I have moder I have it on heavy moderation because I don't have Eric right now. But this will be the last one. Uh, 
and I'm doing the shoulder, so I'm doing the highest point on the shoulder, so it's the apex of the shoulder curve. And then we are doing the upper thigh, so again, making it as straight as possible to the ground. And in this case, I would make it straight, but it's fine because I was just doing this pretty quick. I need to redo the ankle. It's actually really bad. So I'm just selecting the ankle again and then redoing it. Uh, okay. I'll fix the, I'll fix the band in a minute. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. Apply. I'm gonna pull this out. Pull it out. And so it's made the fit suit. And save. How do you do gathering without having the gathering effect? I don't know what you mean. I'm gonna just save this as Hannah fit suit. Um. I mean, you would basically be easing it, but no matter what you do, if you have more bulk on one side than another, you will end up having a bit of gathering and a small puff. You would just have less volume, I guess. Just have your sleeve be less large. So going back to my avatar, I'm selecting the fit suit that we just made. File, open project. Let me go to... Which while that loads, I'm going to bring in the overall look. Open, no avatar. No, add. Not open. Uh, settings. So it definitely doesn't fit her, clearly. So we'll go ahead and this has been simulated on an avatar with a fit suit, which is very important. And then we have an avatar without a fit with another fit suit. So it's going to target to her. I'm going to do auto fitting and it will take a little bit. Maintain pattern curvature. Okay. And I'm going to go fix that. And it's going to take me a little bit because it's doing about five different operations all at once. Let me go to All right, there we go. So it, it looks like it's taking a while, but it is doing this all at like 10 and some five particle distance. Yeah, if you have an example, drop it into the Discord and we can, we all of us can basically look at it. Um, yeah, I think 123EM has been here a few times in the chat. So um, if you haven't joined the Discord, I highly recommend you do. Um, and then you, there you can actually share images of what you're working on. Um, but yeah, right now it's just taking a bit because it's doing uh, retargeting, draping, and resizing. So don't be surprised if pieces take this long. I can grab this while it's happening because this is the thing that just takes the longest. So here's the Discord kind of invite link. Control. Control C. 
Control V. I don't know if the stream's even happening still. Sure hope it's still working. There we go. All right. It did it. Let's see. Look at that. Not bad. And it fixed the fit on one leg somehow. It's a little low on her back, so we can adjust that. Yeah, there it goes. So whenever you do use the auto fitting feature, it will all, you'll probably, you should expect to have to do some, some changes, but not have to do it all from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a cheat here using the tech on avatar. I'm going to start with the cap and then I'm just going to put it anywhere on the pattern. And then I'm going to use the edit tech tool to just go ahead and grab the apex of that and do the same to the other side. So the tack tool is a great tool. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of you use it, but you can also use it for this purpose as well. And I can adjust it like that. And if I want, I can, I'm just gonna actually pull it where is it on her? Grab that and just move it higher. I will check the Discord here. Her bust is much larger than the previous avatars, so I would probably pull this up. Right now the friction is back to its previous setting, so I can easily adjust this. There we go. But you can see here, I did want you all to see. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. Interesting. It severely affected the pattern. This was a rectangle. So be aware of that. Let me clean this up just so we all have the uh, shape down here for each piece. Look at that. This is the bodice. This is the bodice. That's the top. So luckily it fits. And it's very different. The pattern is very much altered and wobbly. Does this even fit? This doesn't match anymore. I mean, I'm not surprised. Uh, and you shouldn't be either. But it is something to be aware of because of like, she's severely a very different shape. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and trace my internal line again, trace its pattern, place it back on fabric, throw that denim on there. I'm probably going to move because her waist, the smallest part of her is not where it is on a normal person. So we're going to go ahead and move this down. And I 
will look at the chat in a second because I see an alert popped up. I'm gonna do it from the waist from that pocket bag. I know I'm adjusting the Bezier curves. I don't recommend consistently staying in the Bezier curves. There we go. Very different shape. This is also why grading rules are very important to have. This is why grading is also different from different sizes with different brands. But we've got our little cuff pants. I do want them to be a little bit more baggy on her. So let's go ahead and fix that. Because it did fit it to the fit suit parameters, but not to like our styling parameters. There. A little more baggy on her. It's also because of how she's standing, too. But we'll go ahead and save this as turn off simulation. There it goes. File, save project as Hannah fit suit version. Okay, awesome. We don't have any pockets on our butt either. That's okay though. It's interesting how it curved the back out. Just because of her, her heavy sway back. That's this. But yeah, we can probably do a cuff uh, next time because I still have a bunch of the menswear versions to do. But here, let me share the rest of those resources. One more time. I'm just going to share it in the pattern reference, that image that I just put. I'm just going to throw it in the in there from my, my computer for that men's pant. Just for reference, uh, it's in the Discord, so a link to the Discord. I did just link it, but I will link it again, so we have kind of the list. Sure hope y'all could see me. Okay, I'm like shrinking down. Um, so there's the link to our Discord again. That is the one that I recommend you join, as we have the most active users on there. For our software, for those of you watching this in the future who are wondering what software I've used, even though we are using our software website, the, pro the program is Marvelous Designer. Here's a link to our website where you can get our software and you can get a 30-day free trial to test out the software and see if it's right for you and your needs. For those of you on Twitch, here's a link to our YouTube channel. Uh, we do keep our streams up there from for the 14 day limit and we let them expire. It's not sending it to Twitch. It's not sending it to Twitch. I'm sending it to Twitch. Um, we let them expire. So just be aware of that. If you want to come to our YouTube channel, we have all of them and we're saving them all. Let me grab our website again for Twitch because for some reason my chat is no longer sending it to Twitch. And for our beginner tutorials, for those who are of you who are new to Marvelous Designer, this is a relatively okay tutorial for the for beginners. You can watch our stream here. But also, okay, it's now now it's sending. Weird. Um, also, we have our official recommended beginner tutorials on our YouTube channel. 
that have kind of the best practices and ways to get started working in Marvelous Designer. This link is kind of like getting used to the user interface and then like the four different methods of getting started in Marvelous Designer, like draping, copying a pattern, using the modular patterns. Um, what's the other one? And using the draw on avatar tool, which you saw me use the tool for the, um, the 3D pattern, but you can do it directly on the avatar. Just be aware if your avatar has a lot of vertices or if you're doing it like on hands, more, more pattern pieces or more segments that you make is more likely to get you a, a finished pattern piece. And for those of you who are having technical difficulties with Marvelous Designer, we have our email, but I do recommend going through our support, um, the support like kind of tab on our website. That way you actually are logged in and we have your user information so we can better help you faster instead of asking you for that information. It's just a little bit faster for when you create a support ticket. And, oh yeah, I'm gonna share that pattern in the Discord. And the Italian chemise that I just found online. So I've shared our patterns in our Discord channel, just kind of the the menswear uh, coverall that we just did, or overalls that we just did, and then the chemise. Follow the instructions. Obviously, I was assuming wrong. Thank, thankfully, we have Rosemary who's checking, <laughs> who's keeping me in check. Um, but yeah, feel free to join our Discord. We um, we have a lot of users there. We have Rosemary in the in the chat. She's not a moderator. I want you guys to know she is just um, she's just a user that's really helpful to everybody else, and we like to uh, support that fact and like kind of give her the nod that she deserves. So thank you all for joining me on the stream today. We'll probably continue this next week and do some more kind of quick basic garments that you can just start building. A whole set of looks for this was the I guess all the women's wear versions because uh, I have the men's knit sweaters and like kind of rolled collars and like quilted and barn jackets next and we might you know roll a cuff next next stream but yeah so feel free to let us know what other things you'd like to see on streams like this I just chose to do cottage core aesthetic because I may have gotten a, a video game that has it coming out soon that I can potentially put on any avatar I want that you can see here. So yeah, thank you all for joining us so much. And I will be on the Discord channel just kind of moderating. Don't like, if you have questions, definitely ask there and you're more likely to get a response from other users than if you ask on like a forum or something like that. And where's OBS? There it is. Like normally I close there, but I feel like some like on um, this was a little bit more interesting. But thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next stream.